If you're faced with installing Sage CRM for the first time, then this can be a little daunting. Uh, this is especially true when you need to think about not only the required hardware and software, but application and system security, and the possible need to cope with large numbers of users, and making sure that those users experience the best system performance possible. But the best way to start anything is to begin at the beginning. And the first thing you need to do is to gather together all the information that you will need and to make sure that you have access to the latest documentation and help resources. The main guides that you will need are the System Administrator Guide, the Installation and Upgrade Guide and the Support Matrix. These are updated for each version of Sage CRM, but you can find them on the community. And you can see here I've come onto the community and I've searched for the documentation for Sage CRM. These guides together will provide you with the details of the system requirements and the minimal hardware recommendations. It's very important to check all the versions of the proposed system right the way from the database version to the browser to be used and the version of Microsoft Office that the customer wishes to use as well. Another useful resource is the online implementation help, which provides a series of steps through the process of implementation from gathering the requirements to system review after go live and beyond. The installation and upgrade guide provides the most detailed path through the process of installing Sage CRM. And I don't intend to duplicate that guide uh, within this lesson. This is something that you can explore on the community. It is nevertheless useful to emphasize a few points. In an earlier lesson about system architecture, I discussed the hybrid nature of the system design. Sage CRM is a product in transition. I'm going to assume in this lesson that you are working with Microsoft SQL Server as the database, um, as Sage no longer offers Oracle as a choice of database with the release of Sage CRM 7.3. The eWare DLL part of the system uses ADO when interacting with the database and the Java-based features use JDBC. This means that when using MS SQL Server uh, installs, uh, TCP IP uh, must be enabled and the SQL Server needs to have a case insensitive collation. Collations specify the rules for how strings of character data are sorted and compared based on the norms of particular languages and locales. Uh, a binary notation or a case-sensitive collation is not supported by Sage CRM. We typically do not have to worry about the collation on new installs of Sage CRM as CRM does not inherit the default database server collation. Instead, it creates its own collation on the Sage CRM database during the installation process. And these are collations are for English, German, Spanish, French, and Chinese. Understanding about collations used by different systems becomes important during the customization of the system when you may need to create connections to third party databases such as ERP databases. And that's discussed in other lessons concerned with advanced customization. The initial database size can also be set up during installation. The default setting of 512 megabytes can be changed, but the size must be an integer and the minimum is 50. And so you can, if you want a one gigabyte database, you put in 1024, and if you wanted a 10 gigabyte database, then you'd put in uh, a 1024 zero. 
the plan size of the database is going to have an important bearing on the system requirements. And what you'd be doing is thinking about what is the initial requirements, but also uh, requirements for a year ahead in operation. And these system requirements uh, I'll discuss a little bit later on in the lesson. Another thing to point out is that database server authentication must be configured for SQL Server and Windows authentication mode. You shouldn't use the database SA user in a live system. The database login used by Sage CRM, whatever it is you end up using, needs to have the rights to add, delete, and change data in every table within the Sage CRM database. As you run the installation program, it will check for prerequisite software and install it where possible. It will also carry out automatic configuration of the system, especially of the web server, to make sure that the necessary modules are installed. Where it cannot carry out the automatic installation of the prerequisite software, then it'll prompt you. For example, on if you're installing on a system which has got IIS 7 onwards, it will check whether you have extensions installed on the web server which are necessary for Sage CRM to function. These are for um, ASP pages, ISAPI extensions, and ISAPI filters. Now, if that's the case, if it, if, if it does find this, what, what it will do is it will display a message to indicate that setup has detected that your, the IIS installation is incomplete and which components are missing or not installed correctly. You can then, during installation, you can then check these are available within the server using the standard Windows behavior to turn Windows features on or off. That's an operating system. Uh, function rather than something within the install shield for Sage CRM. You have to go into the operating system to do that. The installation and upgrade guide makes a number of general recommendations about the hardware and software to use. There are general observations on the hardware such as the web server should use disk mirroring, um, RAID 1, uh, the database server should use a RAID 10 disk array, and if you have a larger implementation, uh, then you should consider using a fiber, ch fiber channel storage area network, SAN, and every customer should ensure backup and recovery capabilities. Among those capabilities, the documentation recommends the use of a hot standby system, an uninterruptible power supply, and that hyperthreading should be turned off in older CPUs. How do we plan if we want to scale the system? How do we plan for memory to be used on the server? Should we think about splitting the database from the web server or even thinking about multiple web servers? How do we cope with this? Now, one of the things that we can do is that there's a whole set of recommendations within inside the system administration guide system uh, installation guide and we can take all of those and we can turn it into a flowchart. Now the latest version of the flowchart can be found on the community and within the learning system within the blogs that support this lesson. When thinking about the number of users within a system I actually prefer to think about the number of actors who interact with the database and the relative number of SQL transactions which are generated. The users who log on are the obvious actors, but you might not think of the Exchange Integration Engine or an ERP integration as an actor, but these may generate significant interactions with the database. And where companies encourage mobile computing, then the iPhone or Windows apps add to the load of the system as does any web services based applications that are used. Even the escalation and keyword search indexing services 
act on the database with frequent SQL queries. And some of these actors actually interact with the database far more frequently and intensively than a simple sales user, perhaps. This means that the prospect of implementing a multi-server environment may be sooner than you first thought. Although um, that is a possibility, you just need to check the documentation, look carefully through and follow the flowcharts which are recommended.